Green and the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition have both indicated that they would support a free vote on changing the law around assisted dying for those who are terminally ill. Assisted dying is illegal in most of the UK and a new documentary from actor and activist Liz Carr examines both sides of the debate on changing the law. Liz joins us now from her home in North London. Morning, Liz. Thanks very much for talking to us about this. And you have been working on this, Good I know, morning. for some time now. Tell us about the film and what you found out. Yeah, it's, it's quite nerve-wracking today because we've been working on this for... Well, I first approached the BBC back in 2011. So there you go. Uh, we've been making it for over a year. And it's, uh, it feels really important, really important to have a viewpoint that I don't think we usually hear about. And that is from myself and the many other disabled people who were really afraid of a change in these laws. And it's like, if we are going to change the law, let's be really honest and open and listen to all perspectives. And, you know, I'm not religious. This isn't, it's usually marginalised an opposition voice as being one of religion. That's not where I come at on this. I'm, I'm secular, but have real concerns. And that's why I wanted to make the documentary over all these years. Liz, so the documentary is, is almost with us. Um, tell us, what, what are your concerns personally? Yeah, I think, look, what happens, it's an authored documentary, OK? And I'm going to take audiences through why I oppose. Why, what has my life experience given me to make me oppose and other disabled people? And it gives me a life of living with precarious health, a lot of involvement with the medical profession. It gives me a life of relying on social care and of that failing and understanding why people might want to end their life when they don't have the support that we need. And it also gives me that experience of being told when I was younger that I wouldn't live to be old. So I know that we can get these things wrong. I know that, that um, diagnoses and prognoses aren't always correct. So it's, it's such a massive topic, but I worry, absolutely worry, that if we legalise this, it will impact on many more people than just terminally ill people. And I think we need to think really carefully about legalising. And Liz, I know that is something that during the work for the documentary you found out, well, it, it, you believe it happen, has happened in other countries already, don't you? Yeah, we went to, I mean, there's so many countries we could have gone to. Although saying that, it's only actually legal in around 12 countries in the world, around 6% of the population have access to it. It's not everywhere. I think we're often told that it is everywhere. It's not. But we did go to Canada, which is a country where it was first legalised. There were a thousand people who used uh, their their assisted suicide law. And as of 2022, six years later, 13,000 people had used it. I mean... It's ridiculous, the number of people who are now using the law. It's expanding. It's no longer just people who are going to end their life within six months. It's actually for people who are suffering intolerably. And that means pretty much anybody with a medical condition can apply. And the reasons what we've seen happen in Canada is that people are applying to use it on the, on the guise of a medical reason, but they're using it for socioeconomic reasons. They're using it for poverty. They're using it for homelessness. Euthanasia in Canada is becoming a, a solution to the problems of a failed social care and medical care system. And as long as that's a reality, we need to think about not legalising it in the UK. Here in the UK, on both sides, there are so many emotions, aren't there? There'll be people with all kinds of different ex families, uh, experiences and, and perspectives. H how do we make sure that, that emotions are not part of the, the political debate? Or maybe they have to be, I don't know. No, but I think that's the problem. I think that's why we have never had a documentary like this one. We've never heard the other side because usually what dominates, and I understand why, but we have opinion polls that dominate, we have personalities that dominate, and we have personal stories, stories that we can't not listen to. They're really important. But what we're not hearing are the stories of all the people who were equally worried why they felt suicidal as disabled or ill people because they are not getting the support that they need. 
you know, assisted suicide, we always hear that it's about choice. But what happens when you feel that you have no choice but to use it? What about when it's easy, when, because it's there, because it's legalised? And what we're seeing in countries like Canada, but also in countries like the Netherlands and Belgium, is that those safeguards that begin, they whittle away. And when we say it's going to be for a small group of people, it extends. Either the definition extends or the numbers using the law extends. But absolutely, this is an emotive and a difficult story. And I do not come at this as somebody who wants anybody to suffer. I want everybody to have a good death, regardless of what people on the other side might think. I think that's the thing. We all want ourselves, our families, everybody to have a good end of life. The only difference is me and other people don't believe that assisted suicide is part of that solution. And Liz, let's just take a moment now, because you, you mentioned that lots of people are concerned, aren't they? What they would like is control over their own destiny, that sense of being in charge of themselves. Let's just hear now from campaigner Esther Ranson, who herself is living with terminal cancer. Because other countries are ahead of us, other countries have legalised assisted dying under carefully regulated circumstances, and the evidence is clear. It does not damage palliative care. And in some cases, it has a really positive impact. And for me personally, it would mean that I could look forward in confidence to a death which is pain-free, surrounded by people I love. Dame Esther Ranson there. I mean, what she is saying and what you're saying are, are so opposed, aren't they, Liz? Is it possible to yes. compromise on this? It, 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 is that possible? So I was asked if I was happy with a clip of Esther Ranson being played, and I actually said no in advance, so thank you for that. Um, because the reason is we don't hear the other arguments. We hear the arguments that people like Esther Ranson talk about, and this is not about her. I'm really sorry for the situation that she is in. But she's had a lot of airtime, and this perspective that I'm talking about, that many disabled people and non-disabled people have, we don't hear about it. So let's at least have a fair discussion, and we're not having that. So the documentary is an attempt to redress the balance of bias that I believe exists in this subject. And I'd also like to say, you mightn't think it, but it's actually, don't expect the usual documentaries that you see. There's actually quite a lot of humour in it, quite a lot of humanity in it, as there should be in all these documentaries, and there's a killer soundtrack, and I <laughs> use kill killer advisedly. <laughs> From that album collection behind you. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we're going to have, like, a Spotify or, or whatever, we're probably not allowed to say that, but I think we do need a soundtrack because the people who've seen it and... Uh, they are like, I want, I want the soundtrack. So music's important, it's emotive. And often in this subject, we hear the sad music, but it, it's also about life. It's tragic and as, as much as people may be suffering. And I'd just like to say, people are suffering in life as well. That's the thing. People, it's not that we're not hearing that people are dying and suffering. Nobody wants that. So we need to look to solutions. But we, ev we really need to look at solutions of people who are suffering in life too. And, and that's really important to me. That's why I campaign. I'm sure that's why Esther Ranson campaigns too. That's why we all do it. Liz Carr, it is great to talk to you. Thank you so much for talking to us this morning in Liz's documentary. It's called Better Off Dead, with a question mark. That's going to air next Tuesday at 9 o'clock on BBC One and iPlayer 2. Throughout